Welcome to another Learn Electrics video and today we'll be looking at IP codes and ingress protection. So what are IP codes? They are a collection of numbers, a number scale that indicates to you and me how well protected appliances and items of machinery are against the ingress or intrusion of foreign bodies and liquids. In other words, they tell us how fingerproof or dustproof something is or whether an appliance is fully waterproof or merely just splash proof. In the photograph here, we have shown a domestic three pin socket such as you would find in the kitchen or lounge of almost every house in the UK. It should not be possible to get your fingers into the socket or for that matter, some other object such as kitchen tools, dinner knives or a spoon. This example shows somebody watering the garden. They may be totally unaware that there is an outdoor socket behind the fuchsia plant. But that should not be the gardener's problem. It is the duty of the installer to ensure that this outdoor socket has an adequate IP rating that will prevent water from penetrating into the socket and electrocuting the gardener. An outdoor luminaire is shown here. It will be exposed to all that the elements can throw at it for 365 days a year for maybe 10 or 20 years. It could be hot and dusty in the summer and stormy weather may bring lashings of wind driven rain. Plant life that grows around it should not be able to penetrate into the actual lamp area and in the winter the luminaire could be covered in snow and ice for several days or weeks. The IP ratings or codes then are a collection of numbers from 1 to 8 that indicate the level of protection offered in preventing solids and liquids from entering the piece of equipment. The bigger the number, the greater the protection that is offered. Let us look at some of the typical numbers that you may come across. We always start with the letters IP so that we know that we are talking about ingress protection. Here we have shown a rating of IP2X and what this actually means will be discussed very soon. We could have something marked as IP4X, but is this better or is it different to the last example? Now we are showing an IPX4 code. So what is the difference to IP4X? Is this something else entirely? Whoops. Now we have IP44. Is that right? There are too many combinations of numbers. They do all mean something. And fortunately, it is very easy to understand their usage. At Learn the Electrics, we have found that once the method is learnt, then it is memorised for life. These numbers can go up to eight. But for the next few minutes, we will stop at level four so that we can more easily understand their usage. Don't worry, we will get to eight very soon. It all starts with a simple table. As I said just a moment ago, we are just looking at the numbers 1 to 4 for now. The left block is an indicator of the protection level against solids and dust, and the right block will show protection levels against sprayed water, waves, and even submersion in a swimming pool. It is very important, in fact, it is essential that you learn to always visualise solids on the left and liquids on the right. We build up the code by starting with the letters IP, then add a number for protection against solids, and finally add a number for the level of liquid protection. Everyone is familiar with the 3 pin 230 volt socket, so let's look at this as the first example. We do not want people putting their fingers into the socket or children poking spoons or other objects into it. The table will tell us that level two protection will prevent objects greater than 12.5 millimeters in size from entering the socket. So there is our first number. We have IP2 something. An indoor socket is not expected to get wet or to be jet washed. And so the manufacturer does not need to specify a protection level for liquids. In this case, we can cross out liquids. Just put a big X across that part of the table. Now we can transfer that big X into our IP code. 
we have now completed our code for the indoor socket IP2X. It is not that difficult really, it just looks complicated when you don't understand it. But all that is starting to change. Here we have shown the descriptions for the first four levels of protection. So let's look at each one briefly. We can see that level one for solids offers protection against objects greater than 50 millimeters in size. Examples would be a hand or a foot. Please realize that these codes are indicators of accidental or unintentional ingress. They may not offer full protection where somebody deliberately uses force or manipulation to overcome the protection offered. These codes are all about protecting the normal person whilst they are doing normal things. Level 2 now will give protection for objects greater than 12.5 millimetres or the imperial size of half an inch. This will prevent the average adult finger from entering the enclosure. At level 3 protection is offered from objects greater than 2.5 millimetres in size. Most DIY tools such as pliers and screwdrivers, kitchen knives etc should not be able to penetrate into the enclosure. Protection level 4 for solids is a commonly quoted number. It prevents ingress from objects greater than 1mm in size. This will include the very small screwdrivers, knitting needles, pieces of wire and other small objects. On a farm this should prevent the ingress of pieces of straw from entering an enclosure and catching fire. If we move on to liquids now, we can look first at level 1 protection. Accessories and appliances at level 1 will be protected from lightly falling drops of water that fall vertically and for a limited amount of time. It is a very low level of protection for indoor equipment and would never be used outside. Level 2 protection is similar to the last one but offers a little bit more protection. Level 2 protection protects against drops of water that arrive diagonally, not just vertically, where the drops might be blown onto the enclosure. Level 3 protection moves up from drops of water to sprayed water. There is now a lot more of it. This sprayed water will be at low pressure and might arrive at the equipment from the side or diagonally, but generally the water spray is pointing in a downward direction. Level 4 will typically be your domestic bathroom shower. Water can arrive from any direction. The water will still be at low pressure, but since the spray head is often removable from the holder, the water could be directed up as well as down and diagonally from all angles. If you think about it, this is exactly what happens if someone is in the shower and they are rinsing the shampoo from their hair. Again, it is normal people doing normal things. We can combine IP ratings together. Say for example, we want to put some equipment into an enclosure inside a farm building. There might be straw in the building and sometimes a hose pipe is used to clean machinery down. So what are the steps? We need IP4X to protect against the straw and we need IPX4 for protection against the sprayed water. When we combine these, we end up with a protection code of IP44. It does not get any more complicated than that. Work out the first number on its own, then work out the second number on its own, and finally just combine the two numbers. Here we have shown the full list of IP ratings that are in common use. Levels 5 and 6 for liquids are used for jet washes under pressure and for waves of water as might be encountered at boat marinas or jetties at the coast. Levels 7 and 8 for liquids are used for submerged equipment in jacuzzis or swimming pools. For solids, 5 and 6 will be used for dust protection levels. Level 5 is dust resistant, where a small amount of dust can be tolerated. 
Level 6 is dust tight. There should be no penetration of dust into the enclosure. So, where might a level 6 be used? Think of a light fitting in a metal working factory. And grinding metal, there will be a lot of metallic dust generated. We do not want this electrically conducted metal dust entering the light fitting and causing tracking and short between electrical terminals. A level 6 dust type light fitting and diffuser should prevent this. There is no level 7 or level 8 for solids for two reasons. If something is dust tight at level 6, you cannot get better than that for protection against solids. Also, if you are using level 7 or 8 protection for liquids, then by implication, if it is proof against being submersed in liquids, then it must be proof against solids. You should, by now, be getting to grips with this process of understanding protection codes. Here are some typical IP ratings. We have returned to our standard 230 volt 3 pin socket. It needs to be finger proof, but since it is installed inside the building, it does not need a liquid protection code to be specified. So, in this case, IP2X is sufficient. A domestic shower will need to be proof against sprayed water from any direction and although there will be some protection from larger objects, none is specified and so IPX4 will suffice. An outdoor luminaire will need protection from many things. Dust, plant growth, snow, rain, perhaps even being jet washed during an enthusiastic spring clean. In this case, an IP rating of IP56 might be required so that it is dust proof and jet wash proof too. It is simply a case of looking at each category in turn and deciding what level of protection is required for each. If you visit our website learnelectrics.co.uk you will find a readable version of the IP ratings table in our tech tips section. Of course there's nothing wrong with installing greater protection than is required, but we should never go in the opposite direction. Here in this example, an IP56 outdoor luminaire is specified, but there would be no problem with installing a luminaire to IP66. Visit learnelectrics.co.uk where you will find more information on IP codes and English protection in our tech tips section. More detailed information on specific products and accessories will always be found in the manufacturer's product brochures and catalogues. Use them and become familiar with which IP ratings are often associated with what type of product. Other electrical topics and items of interest can be found on our website and on our YouTube channel. We can also be found on Facebook where you can read our blogs and some interesting stories. Practice is the key to all learning. Practice, repeat, practice, repeat. Spend a little time understanding IP codes and ingress protection and you will have another powerful tool in your mental toolbox. We hope you've enjoyed this video. We feel sure that you will have learned something. Click the subscribe button to be kept up to date with future videos. Thank you for watching. We wish you well. and We look forward to seeing you again very soon.